good afternoon. I'm here to talk to you about clearing the green fence and what the new restrictions in China will mean to you. So I'm Marie Knudsen. I work with Republic Services, formerly Allied Waste Services, and we're your local trash hauler. Uh, we do more than haul your trash, though. We take care of recycling, diversion with businesses, and we do a lot of extras for the cities, especially the city of Benicia, which is this, one of the cities that I work closely with. We do everything from compost giveaways to compost classes, helping with events to make sure they have trash and recycling. We have an incredible landfill, an incredible sorting facility in Newark, and uh, a lot of wonderful programs, a wetland program in Pittsburgh. So we do everything we can to be environmentally conscious and be a good partner with the businesses and the environment. But there still is trash. Everybody has trash. So let's look at what we are throwing away. So bear with us while we go to a video here. This is what is typically dumped every day at the transfer station in Martinez. This is a truck dumping your normal waste. On average, the annual waste per person per day is 4.4 pounds. It's at least down from seven pounds, but that's going on all day long, every single day. In that trash, there's about 19 billion pounds of the polystyrene peanuts, about 40 billion plastic knives, forks, and spoons. 28 billion pounds of food and enough steel to level and restore Manhattan. Uh, there's also enough plastic film to shrink wrap Texas. And this is, this is just annually. So that's not even talking about all the recycling that could have been pulled from there. At our station alone, at the transfer station, we have six 22-ton trucks that make seven trips each day. So that equals about 924 tons per day of garbage going to the landfill. Now, landfills are supposed to meet their capacity. It, they, they can't be short on space in the next 15 years, but 15 years isn't very long, so we obviously need to do something really, really soon to get a curb on how much garbage we're producing. So, So we're gonna go past the talking trash. We did that. Now, the state of California is trying to help us out. They put out some regulations with AB 32 and the greenhouse gases, trying to curb those. And that was in 2006. And we've upgraded since then with AB 341, which basically means any commercial business that has four yards or more of trash going per week has to have recycling by California law. And we also are working with multifamily units because they're huge uh, bad players in the diversion world. Uh, it's really hard to get tenants to uh, so sort their recycling from the trash. So each city has to be at 50% diversion right now. From a few years ago, they have to make sure that 50% of that is being recycled. But in, uh, by 2020, we have to be at 75%. That's a big difference to try and get people to recycle and divert 25% more within the next basically seven years. So there's a lot of things we can do. We can work harder on food waste. We can work harder on recycling. But that's part of what my job is, is to help people find ways to do that and also work with the businesses and divert as much of their byproducts as we can. 
So next slide, please. So there's a lot that you can recycle. Um, your one through seven plastics, paper, aluminum cans, uh, cardboard, of course, newspapers, all the generic stuff you probably already know about. But we've kind of upped it to be able to help companies divert more and to meet those city standards. We were allowing more shrink wrap and different things like that, a lot of hard plastics. And in Benicia, I even have a golf cart company that when the carts break down, they dismantle them and they put the roofs from the golf carts and everything, all the hard plastics, uh, medical companies, the cases that things come in, they've put it, been putting them all in the recycling. And exciting for us, we made it single stream. You just stick it all in together. So you don't have to have your, your container for glass and plastic and paper. It's all together, so that's wonderful. But we're not sorting it very well on the other end. That's the problem. So next slide, please. So what happens to it is it goes in the truck and then it goes to the sorting facility and it's moving down the line and they have pickers that are pulling everything out but we're not doing a very good job and it's going into those huge bales and I'm standing ne next to one so you can see how large they are it's going in those huge bales and it's going off to China and we find some of the most amazing things in these bales too uh, we find rubber hoses we find uh, all kinds of uh, things that shouldn't be recycled, styrofoam cannot be recycled right now. And on the sort lines we see all kinds of things of like, believe it or not, a box of kittens got through and actually made it in a truck and made it through the sort line. Now the happy story is they all survived and the, uh, your local uh, resorter, or excuse me, recycler right here, Pacific Rim in Benicia, they kind of adopted all these kittens, but we see a lot of different and strange things go down the sort line that obviously don't belong there. Also, we have trouble with contamination. So there may be a recycling bin in a parking lot at a company and someone comes along and wants to get rid of their trash and they dump it in the recycling bin instead of in the trash bin. Well, now that bin is emptied into the truck and that whole truck is contaminated. So I found all kinds of things in the, from the trucks where they've alerted me that um, people have been illegal dumping, like a huge swordfish, a live swordfish mixed in and it got mixed in with the recycling. So. That's one of the things I'm trying to help people be educated and lock containers and do better so the product that's going to the recycling company is better. So next pick please. So we're doing a lot uh, to send those bales over to China. Now why does China want them? Because basically their, their need for plastic for manufacturing is huge. You see so many things that are made in China. They also, for cardboard, they don't have the land to grow all the trees to make new cardboard. So there, we ship so much cardboard to them so that they can reuse it and create more boxes to enclose the products they send to us. Also, labor is very cheap in China. And a Chinese woman, on an average day, may only earn $15 for working all day on a line. So the labor is very cheap, their restrictions are a lot less, and they don't have the space, so they're finding ways to use that the, our plastic discards and our cardboard to make new products. So you can see, back in 95, we were about $200 million of recycling was going to China. And now we're almost up to $600 million. And the two different bars there, you'll see the darker bar is the whole rest of the world where we're sending everything. And the blue bar is what we're sending to China. So you can see how much export they're getting of our recyclables overseas and mainly in China. 
So if our trash and our recycling has been our biggest export for America, it's kind of funny that China is doing better with those things and their major export are these computers and plastic products that it, we're buying. So we're kind of unbalanced there. So next slide, please. So China said, enough, we're done. We don't want all your dirty stuff. We don't want your dirty water bottles. We want clean products. We, we don't want to have to deal with all of your nasty trash that's mixed in with this recycling and the rubber hoses that went down the sort line and got missed. And they've got mounds and mounds of dirty plastic that's getting into their waterways and polluting their area. And is it all us? No, they also are a coal burning country, but they've got to do something about their air and water. So they said, time out, we're doing Operation Green Fence. And they went from us sending all of these recyclables to them as they are to saying it can only have 1.5% contamination in one of those huge bales that I was standing by. So uh, we've got a lot of changes that we have to make to be able to continue to export to them. So it, it enforces the Operation Green Fence. It enforces the regulations on importing dirty scrap recyclables. And it's an effort for them to improve their environmental standards. It also prohibits contaminated products coming over. And the, what the Chinese officials are doing is they're, in, they're inspecting it much more vigorously. And if it's not good, they're sending it back. So you can imagine if you're, say, Pacific Rim, which is in Benicia, a small recycling company, and you send off bales and bales over to China to be purchased, and they say, oh, sorry, it's contaminated, it's got moisture in the middle, it's not washed, you have to pay, or Pacific Rim has to pay for it to come back. So it's going to be devastating for the small countries, for, or excuse me, the small companies to get this recycling back when it's getting kicked back. And basically, 11% of what is going over there right now is being declined. I think so. It's, oh, maybe I should hold it. Okay, sorry. Let me. I'm too short. There we go. So 11% of what is being sent over there right now is being declined since, to, since it started in February of this year. So what, next slide please. So there's, um, what, there's a lot of different things you can do to help so these companies, especially your Pacific Rim in Benicia, uh, can stay in business. When you're putting something in the recycling, rinse it out a little better. It shouldn't have all kinds of food waste in it. Uh, maybe you, uh, it's a container from yogurt and put a little water in it, shake it up, and then throw it in the recycling. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we ha do have to do better. Uh, the places like Pacific Rim are adding a lot more employees to the sort line, so they're catching a lot more of the things that, are, that shouldn't be in there. And they're working with us to help residents learn what they can do to make sure what really can go in the recycling is what's in there. And also, like I said about the swordfish, so that we're helping get locks on containers in areas where it's obviously being uh, contaminated with illegal dumping. So we're trying to help with the problem also. And they're also upgrading their equipment. So um, Pacific Rim, for instance, is adding a lot more and a lot of different kinds of sorting machines so they can catch things and stop the line and pull them out. Next slide, please. So how is this going to affect you? Well, the costs. Obviously, the price of plastic, if they sell it over there and they're not getting the money for it, well, then the price for those goods that are made out of the recycling are going to go up, and that includes computers and all of our iPhones and our gadgetry. And uh, 
what will we be able to recycle? Well, that's probably going to change a little. We can right now do the one through seven plastics, but it may go back to just the one through three plastics, just your water bottles and things like that, and milk containers and that, and not all the um, blister packs and things like that that gadgets come in. It's probably going to take longer to get things. So maybe you order an iPhone or a different piece of equipment. Or maybe if you're a uh, business and you order a part that's made of plastic or PVC pipe which we use in building and in construction, it could take a lot longer to get that because China is actually kind of at a breaking point where they're running out of the plastic to use, yet they don't want the dirty stuff either. And there's also uh, changes in commerce with China. They, they kind of have an advantage because they've got the low wages, they've got companies moving over there because of the low wages, and they can also force us to clean everything up on our end, which costs us money, yet their biggest export is all these things we're buying. So they've kind of got a huge advantage right now. So that, that'll affect us again on pricing and different things and, and what we can get and how our government is going to work with China. Next slide. Next slide. Was that it? Next slide. So it's definitely going to affect us of, I think I did that one. There we go. Oh, that was me. <laughs> it's definitely going to affect us on, uh, on what, we, uh, what we're buying and what you can do. And definitely please talk to your congressman or your uh, political uh, associates and let them know that we really need to start using our recyclables here. We need to push our manufacturers here to use recycled materials, not brand new plastics, to make what we're making here so that we don't have to go through that circle and the green fence. And you want to always try and choose recycled products. Uh, make sure what's clean is in your bin is clean. And again, use your wallet as your voice. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And again, Re Republic Services is happy to be your waste provider. And we, um, we're happy to take care of your recycling for you. So please be sure to check our CNG truck outside, too.